What the hell is this? Well, I think it's the future of retouching. Okay, not the future because pro retouchers have been doing something like this for years. It's taken them hours, but I was able to go from this to this in one click. And I'm gonna show you how. Now my brand is very minimalistic when it comes to editing. You can hear one of my clients talk about that she likes that I don't over Photoshop. I really, really like that they're not like touched up a whole lot. Like I like being able to see things that would otherwise be photoshopped in like a magazine or something. Now don't get me wrong, I have been using a light skin smoothing on all of my images for years, uh, using Luminar's skin smoothing, Portraiture has another one, Lightroom has their texture slider, Photoshop doing split frequency retouching, but I have literally never seen anything like this software that my friend Anita Sadowska showed me. It's still not perfect. It's from this company called Retouch For Me. They've got a lot of different plugins, but I was really only interested in two, Dodge and Burn and Portrait Volumes. And if you decide that these are for you, there's a link in the description for 20% off. All right, so let's apply this to an image. Command J in order to create a duplicate. We're gonna say filter, retouch for me. Dodge and burn. Now I'm on an Apple M1 Max, so this takes about six seconds for me. Your speed may vary. It's at 100, you can go more or less. We're gonna use it to create a soft light layer. So let's go ahead and click apply. And here we go is that soft light layer. The reason why I do this is so that I can see the actual changes that are being made. And here you can see the before and after. The problem with a lot of skin smoothing software to me is that they remove the texture from the skin. You know what I'm talking about. People who think this looks good. But on a more serious note, to compare, if we go ahead and pull up another one, Imaginomic Portraiture that I've used a lot in the past and just run it on its normal standard setting, you can see that it's also doing some skin smoothing, but you can see all of the texture that's lost. She almost looks out of focus. Whereas this doesn't lose any of the texture in the skin. It just evens out the skin tones. It's taking every dark area that she's got in her skin and brightening it up and taking every bright area that she's got and darkening it down in order to create that smooth skin tone. However, I think that's too much. So I'm gonna pull the opacity down to 50%. Beautiful. This is a more normal amount, softening the skin, but not taking away too much of the texture. Let's grab another as an example. These, by the way, are edited with my coming out very soon, Ever Summer Volume 2 presets. I think that they are just absolutely beautiful. This is the ES4 preset. All right, so let's run it again. Command J will duplicate that layer. Filter, retouch for me, dodge and burn. We're gonna do another soft light layer so that we can see, hit apply. You can see a few of these spaces are really, really bright, almost bright white. And these are these individual dots that if we click it, you can see is basically trying to take away all of these moles, darker freckles that I think are really quite beautiful on her skin. It's doing whatever it can to get rid of it. And I really think that's kind of the crux of the software is it's not smart enough yet to recognize the difference between something like a mole or a freckle and what would be a blemish or a skin inconsistency or something like that. No doubt it will continue to improve, but this is another reason why you'd want to pull this down to about 50% or so, so that it doesn't quite do as extreme of a job and take away those things that make skin look like skin. Now, if you decide it's doing it too much, you can very easily create a mask and go in here and just brush out these little areas. Bring them back to life. There, now you can see I've painted some of the freckles back in. We're just gonna pull this down to 50% a little bit and you can see the areas that I did just with the little circles on them here. And that's gonna make your image look more natural. Now let me grab a second image so I can show you the next thing that I really, really love and that's called portrait volume. So let's go ahead and add another one of these presets on there. I think honestly ES4 is going to be our winner. We're going to do the same thing, Command J to duplicate. We're going to go to Filter, Retouch for Me, Portrait Volumes. 
And again, we're gonna have it do the soft light layer so that we can see specifically what's going on. We can see the difference instantly is a more three-dimensional image. So this is the contour that it's made. It's darkened around her shoulders. It's lightened around her arms. Same with her legs here and her thigh. You can see little outlines of her hands, her chest, and even this little highlight here on her cheek. It honestly glows. It's like it's glowing. To really accentuate it, let's just duplicate this and you're gonna see even more extreme what it's doing. Take a look at her arm here. See how there was almost no shape before? And now there is. Now that is obviously way too much and I wouldn't do that. So we just bring this down to about maybe 60%. Before I knew portrait volumes existed, I would try to do the same thing, but in a much longer, more tedious and less effective way with the dodge and burn action. I just click this and then I've got a burn layer that's set up to darken anything that I paint and a dodge layer that's set up to brighten anything that I paint. What I would do is I would take this brush and I would use it to contour some of these areas that I had just outlined. The goal would be to create a little bit of a line, a little bit of a shape here, so that we have a little bit more dimensionality in our photo. But how ridiculous is that? All of that painting basically got me this line drawing that looks like it was done by somebody in first grade instead of this much more useful version of what I was just trying to do. And again, I can't stress this enough. The whole point is that these are subtle changes. What most people get wrong about retouching is they try and do the extreme. It just doesn't look real. So of course you could, we could double up this portrait volumes and we could run heal here and we could run dodge and burn but by the time that happens it's really starting to look like just some fake person so here it is with all three of those plugins on max and does it look nice sure but does it also look less real i think so so me personally this is not how i'm going to retouch my images let's turn this off we're going to bring this down to 60 percent and we're gonna bring this down to 50% as well. This here is a more accurate version of what I would be doing. I'll give you one more example. You can see how it looks like a charcoal painting almost. We're gonna switch this to soft light and you can see just how, especially on her arm and on her face, just a little bit more depth, a little bit more three dimensionality. Let's run dodge and burn on this one as well because we can see a lot of skin inconsistencies here. So look at what it's done, gone through here individually. We're gonna switch this to soft light. You can see all that it's done, especially in the arm if we check out this. I mean, that's kind of crazy to me. We add in the portrait volumes and in just one click basically, we can get from here to here. And to do that in one click, you're just gonna make an action. There's a thousand YouTube videos on this, definitely check them out. And you may be thinking, okay, that's not a massive difference. The whole point of retouching is that it doesn't look so fake. So tell me what you guys think. Is this a good tool? Is this gonna be helpful to you? Is this just another tech thing that nobody really needs? Let me know in the comments. And if you do think it will be helpful to you, there's a 20% off code with a link there as well. But if you think a little bit deeper, this kind of gets me curious on where retouching is heading and I want to hear from you guys on this too. This is incredibly accurate and sophisticated today, but it's still missing some things like being able to recognize moles and freckles. I don't think it's going to be like that forever. I think pretty soon there will be a, the ability if a human can recognize it, then the computer will be able to recognize it too. And then it's going to make its way into Instagram and Snapchat. And on the consumer level, you'll be able to have much more natural looking touched up appearances, which is gonna be kind of crazy. So technology's getting nuts, you guys. And I wanna hear your thoughts. Is it good, bad? I don't know. I don't know, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who takes pictures, who shares some information on the things that he learns. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. Let's talk about it.